Margo Lane. And I'm Bob Spicer, and this is your Lake of the Ozarks news update brought to you by Lake TV and LakeExpo.com and sponsored by High V and YC Power Sports. Today we're going to talk about... A big catch for the Lake of the Ozarks. A new way to cruise a historic area. Sounds like fun. What planning and zoning has to say about gators. And does the lake need a gun ordinance? We'll get to all that after a message from High V. valuable asset for the community uh, and for, you know, for the EMS uh, hospital and fire department that we get the patients to the hospital as quickly as possible. I fly for uh, Staff for Life program and what we're out here doing today is we're uh, aircraft familiarization for the fire department who uh, helps us land, makes our landing area safe. They've got a new helicopter here that is based over at the uh, staff too, over at Lake Regional Hospital. And we just wanted to make sure that we were familiar with how, how the helicopter worked and loaded uh, prior to actually using them on an emergency event. And today they're doing their first training exercise to fly in an EC-130 EMS bird to the helipad at Lake Ozark Helicopters. We want to make sure that we are prepared for our public and we know how it operates prior to the emergency event. The helicopter was able to approach at a safe angle. There wasn't any obstructions for them that came in. The LZ was established well. Uh, communication was made before they landed to make sure they were aware of any hazards. They came in, uh, the crews participated well. The helicopter crew has always been excellent to work with. And uh, so I'm, I'm very happy with it. So this is a really good area for a helicopter just because of the terrain. This will save va lots of valuable time for the, the transport of the, of the patient. It kind of puts it at a nice central location. We've got nice major roads running to it so the ambulance can travel safely to this landing zone. The helicopter is only about seven minutes away so they can get here in the time, you know, we can call them from the scene and they could pretty much meet us here. A couple weeks ago, we were doing some final planning for the offshore Super Series race, and uh, Jerry and Chief Amsinger, our fire chief, had met. And they were having a dis short discussion, and it was all at the same time we were trying to pick a good, safe landing zone during the day that wasn't, you know, a parking lot full of cars. The uh, Lake Ozark Fire Department uh, has been been pushing for this because they're the first ones on scene. And, uh, and they know the value of getting things done quickly. And they have been, again, instrumental in getting this put together. Jerry said, oh, by the way, I've been kind of wanting to do this for years. Well, it's a good feeling to be able to help in any way we can. We've been talking with the, with the hospital for a number of years about this. So it just kind of all pulled together. I call, called Jerry and we worked it out and here we are. We felt that this would be something that would be an asset to the community. I'd like to thank Staff for Life for coming down and I'd like to thank Jerry for helping facilitate this. It's a, it's a really good thing when we can all come together and benefit our community like this. And you know, we're here to help, we're part of the community. We want to make sure that we're you know, doing everything that we can. The young professionals at the lake are hosting a recruitment social on Thursday from 4 to 7 p.m. If you're looking to become more involved in the lake community and meet like-minded professionals in the area, this will be a great opportunity. They'll be at Redhead's Lakeside Grill from 4 to 7, and if you join YPL that night, you'll get a 50% discount on yearly dues. It's time for the annual Susan G. Komen Rally for a Cure Golf Tournament at Rolling Hills Country Club. Breakfast and registration starts at 8.30 Thursday morning. Shotgun start 9.30. It's going to be a fun 18-hole four-person scramble, and the money raised goes to a great cause, of course. If you want to join the fun, it's 30 bucks for members, 35 for non-members. The Camden County Dinner Theater is back with a new performance called Play On by Rick Abbott. There are shows on Friday and Saturday. Museum doors open at 5 p.m. and dinner is at 6. There's limited space, so reserv reservations are highly recommended. Tickets are just $15 and you can call the Camden County Museum to reserve your spot. 
Friday, get out and support our troops at the annual poker run. That's at several locations around the lake, including Camden on the Lake, Captain Ron's, and the Fishing Company. It's a great chance to see all those big boats gather at the lake for this fun-filled poker run. And with 10 stops in the run, you'll have plenty of time to enjoy what the Lake of the Ozarks has to offer. The annual Girly Man Golf Tournament is on Saturday at Sycamore Creek Golf Club in Osage Beach. And in case you're not familiar with this one, it's unique because while the guys who raise money for breast cancer awareness and research, anyone who plays also has to wear a dress. It's a great time for a great cause. This year's theme is Sheroes. That's right, female superheroes. Registration starts at 1030 and shotgun start is at 12. It should be a blast. The Missouri Symphony Orchestra is returning to the lake area this weekend. Show starts at 7 p.m. at the School of the Osage High School. The orchestra performs a special tribute to Princess Diana entitled Queen of Hearts, which, by the way, is an original composition written by local Craig Cervantes. Adult admissions, 20 bucks. Students K through 12 get in for five. Tickets are available online at all central bank locations, the Lake Arts Council office, and at the door the evening of the performance. Well, that's just some of what's happening at the lake this weekend. Go to lakeexpo.com for a complete list of events this weekend. Coming up, find out who wants gun control at the lake and how the lake made it into the major leagues. In a boating tip from Bob's No Wake Zone, after word from YC Power Sports. On the road, on the trail, or on the water, if you're looking for heart-pounding performance and fun, head for YC Power Sports in Osage Beach. The biggest and best brand names in the field, along with incredible selection and unrivaled service. Make this year at the lake the best it can be. With a visit to our showroom in Osage Beach, and coming soon, our new relocated showroom in Columbia. Take a look at ycpowersports.com, too. Summer fun is just waiting for you at YC Power Sports in Osage Beach and Columbia. Here's a safe boating tip from Bob's No Wake Zone. Captain Bob May. Here's some information if you're thinking about going out boating, even though you might think you're not going to be out after dark. The required navigation lights differ depending on the size and the length of the boat that you're on. You must display the required navigation lights between sunset and sunrise or in periods of restricted visibility. For all motorized vessels under 40 feet, red and green side lights and an all-around white light or both a masthead and stern light must be visible. And if you're stopped or anchored out, the required all-around light must be visible from all directions. Spotlights should not be used while motoring on the lake, but they may be used in short bursts to identify the shoreline or an object like a marker buoy. Left on, they could destroy the night vision of other boaters. Decorative lighting on your boat, which has become very popular, should not be used when you are actually on the lake motoring. But once you get back to the dock, flip them on and enjoy. And we thank Bridgeport Marina for having us down today for this safety message. And you might be interested in my boating radio show, Bob's No Wake Zone, every Saturday morning on News Talk KRMS. What's been happening at the lake? Well, here's a look at some of the major stories from last week. The TV show Major League Fishing shined their spotlight on the Lake of the Ozarks recently. They filmed part of their sixth season here as they documented 24 anglers competing in the Bass Pro Shop Summit Select. The week-long competition at the lake began June 13th and ended June 18th. MLF Commissioner Don Rux said they caught a record number of fish and called the lake an excellent fishery. But that's all he'd reveal, so you'll have to wait until January next year to get the official results when the show airs on the Outdoor Channel. Celebration Cruises of Lake of the Ozarks has doubled its fleet. The celebration is now on the lake docked at the Bagnell Dam in Lake Ozark. The original celebration continues to sail from Osage Beach near the Grand Glaze Bridge. Celebration Cruises says they wanted to help revitalize the Bagnell Dam Strip and give families a chance to cruise from the dam just like they used to. But getting the boat to the lake wasn't easy. The crew traveled from Chicago down the Mississippi to the Missouri and then when it got to Jefferson City, the 80-foot skipper liner was pulled out of the water and trucked down Highway 54 to the dam. The new ship made its debut at Lake Race on June 4th. 21 foreign exchange college students are doing paid internships at Woods Supermarket in Sunrise Beach this summer. Craig Easter, CEO of Woods, wants, to, wants the community to know that this does not mean that 21 local folks were unable to get jobs at Woods. In fact, they still have 20 to 30 more associate positions to fill. So if you're looking for a job, head to Woods for an application. Easter says, who knows, you may make some friends from around the world. The students are part of a State Department intern program that encourages cultural exchange between the U.S. and other countries. Many of the students are majoring in engineering, accounting, or other areas that will help them run family businesses back home. 
Owner of Shady and Lazy Gators wants to add property to the Gators complex, but the Camden Planning and Zoning Commission says that nothing will be rezoned until the land is actually purchased. Glacier Park Investments, which owns Lazy and Shady Gators, has a pending contract, but it's contingent on pending litigation against the current owners. Commission argues that rezoning the property causes problems beyond the pending sale and the lawsuit, which has been an ongoing since 2004. Property doesn't meet uh, code requirements or minimum lot size requirement for business zoning, and the pre-existing structure on the land also does not meet the setback requirements. Ongoing since 2004. <laughs> Good luck. As the debate about gun control begins again across the country, on a local level, the Lori Board of Aldermen grappled with the idea of a gun ordinance. Complaints from a Lori resident about a neighbor firing over 500 rounds triggered the conversation. Initially, Mayor Ann Mayor Allen Kimberling agreed a gun ordinance might be a good idea, but after discussion, he changed his position. Those opposed to an ordinance, like Alderwoman Carol Gill, said this type of activity happens rarely and therefore didn't warrant an ordinance. Alderwoman Karen Dobbins re referenced the City of Columbia, which had to repeal its gun ordinance because of deer overpopulation. Lori attorney Steve Grantham said that as long as the shots were fired safely into a berm, it was unlikely to violate any current city policy. In the end, the board agreed that regulating guns in Lori was not necessary. If you drive Highway 54 in Camden, you probably smelled something pungent in the air. Well, in fact, it's turkey guts. A semi-truck carrying the viscera crashed on Highway 54 last week, and while crews worked to clean the mess up off the road, the smell is going to be around for a while. Camden driver pulled their Jeep out in front of the semi, was headed west at 54 and McCrory Drive. The semi-truck driver hit the brakes, which caused the turkey innards to slosh out of the top of the trailer, the truck then crashed into the Jeep. Wow. Neither driver was injured, fortunately, but the Jeep's driver was cited for failure to yield right away. And in case you're wondering what a truck was doing hauling all that material, it's a byproduct of turkey processing and it's used to make animal food products. The Lori Board of Aldermen is looking for ways to keep sewer and water rates down for their customers and create additional revenue. One way would be to connect residents outside city limits to the city sewer system. Apparently, the treatment plant is quite nice, but only running at 40% capacity. Adding more users would mean more revenue for the city. Stan Schultz of Schultz Surveying and Engineering believes the city is sitting on a $2.5 million asset that could significantly increase the revenue. The board approved asking for bids to conduct a more in-depth study to help them develop a plan to move forward. Thanks to the record-breaking success of Winterfest and the Camaro Car Rally at Magic Dragon Car Show, Daybreak Rotary is awarding more than $60,000 to Lake Area Charities this year. In Daybreak's 20-year history, more than $600,000 has been presented to Lake Area Charities. And this August at the club's charity reception, some very good people once again get some very important help. But who will be so lucky? You'll have to wait and see. In the meantime, Daybreak thanked their many sponsors, including Redhead Lakeside Grill, Central Bank of Lake of the Ozarks, and Missouri Association Management. That's this week's news update. Thanks for watching us on Como Connect Channel 90 and watch anytime on MyLakeTV.com. And now we're back on Charter Channel 197. And remember to connect with us on Facebook and Twitter at MyLakeTV. And you can check out our Instagram page at handle my underscore Lake TV. And for Margo and the entire news team from here at the Lake TV News Studio, I'm Bob Spicer and have a great day.